Hello, everyone. Um, a very happy Tuesday morning to all of you. Um, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday morning. It's not the regular slot of Sunday. Um, it's 10 o'clock here. Well, uh, we started early, actually. It's four minutes to 10. But anyways, yeah, um, it's 10 in the morning in the UK. It's 5 p.m. in Manila. I hope um, our friends in Manila are watching. And also, it's 7 p.m. in um, Sydney. Uh, I know that uh, I've got a friend in Sydney who said that I always start Ask the Drummer very, very late so he can watch it live. But now it's not too late, 7 p.m. So hopefully you're watching uh, today. Um, today's guest is actually, I'm really, really excited about it. I couldn't believe that she said yes to Ask the Drummer. Um, she's an Australian legend and also um, she's Tracy Thorne's rock and roll friend. And I really want to bring her um, uh, in right now on the studio. So um, my dear friends, please welcome Lindy Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I, I'm a, but I get really excited. Sometimes I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I, forgot this, I forgot this was live, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, well, because uh, I always saw it, like do it live, so that because I'm not very good with technical questions about like technical drumming questions. So sometimes I ask help from other uh, friends, like viewers, and then they can ask about the technical drumming side of it <laughs> if they wanted to. But um, anyways, good morning, good morning, Lindy. So um, you're in London at the moment. I am. I'm in London. I I flew into Newcastle on time. Uh, to record with the girl with the replaceable head and that was that was really fun that nine absolutely fantastic songs actually about um five of them uh were in six eight uh which is you know unusual and uh oh, that, yeah isn't it to have a, a majority like that uh but that was yeah. and, and they, they were they were interesting a couple of the six eights had a triplet in in them in the in the in the in the beats <laughs> in the in the, the eighth night, so uh, it was kind of, that was kind of fun, and then I came down here and yeah, um, yeah. I have a lot a lot of friends in um, London. In London, uh, I'm staying at a friend's house, and uh, I um, have now been looking forward to playing with Rob Lloyd and Janet Bean. And yeah. Jack so Rob Lloyd's from the Nightingales and Janet Bean from Freakwater in Chicago. Yeah. Our really beautiful album together called um, Black Cat, Dark Horse, which is also a, a really great song. And yeah. um, we're, uh, we're, and doing, we're doing a gig uh, next um, Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. yeah, and I'm going to see you next Tuesday. Oh, yeah, so I'm right. going, down, yeah, I'm going down to London because I'm really excited about that. But I'm going to ask you about it later in the show. But uh, what what's the weather like there? Because uh, this time of year in Australia, is it sunny? Or, well, it's always sunny in Australia, isn't it? Well, I think the weather in Australia and the weather here is pretty much the same at the moment. It's today is absolutely beautiful, and it's it's. I've got a T-shirt on, which is pretty in incredible, and <laughs> the sky is blue, and uh, so this is spring, and um, in Australia it's autumn, and it's ex exactly the same temperature. The same. Yes, oh, right. <laughs> and and the sky would be blue, and um, you know just a slight chill. That's it. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I've noticed um, on Wikipedia, your Wikipedia entry actually says that. You've got um, a, a three-letter thing after your name. It's OAM. That's the first time I've actually seen it. And it, I looked, I looked it up, and it's Order of Australia medal. Yeah. So, do you actually sort of like use that, like Belinda Morrison OAM? <laughs> no, I don't use it because I think it might be uh, pretentious to use it. But <laughs> That's not saying that I, I'm not proud to have received one. I am proud to have received an Order of Australia Medal um, because of the work I did uh, in uh, not only as a musician, but in uh, different areas of the music industry, such as um, helping to establish and working with the first and only 
music industry charity called Support Act. But also I, I took a great interest in copyright and yeah, um, yeah. S sat on a number of boards, but in particular the Collection Society uh, for the uh, uh, sound recording fees. So you know how uh, songwriters get paid for when their songs are played on radio and television and in clubs yeah. and clubs. Well, the owners of sound recordings also get paid. And in oh, the uh, Northern Hemisphere, the musicians who played on that recording um, also get paid uh, um, for the distributions coming from clubs and pubs and TV and radio. Uh, in Australia, we have a different system, uh, which isn't as generous. And uh, I was trying to, in many ways, have that system put into Australia, but I failed. And um, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, it's too complicated to really talk about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, okay. Well, um, I'm gonna sort like do a proper sort like introduction now to um, ask the drummer. So I'm gonna I want to welcome you to ask the drummer. Uh, episode seventy eight is all about you, uh, Belinda Morrison. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, so according to um. Uh, your Wikipedia entry. You were born in Sydney, but you grew up in um, Queensland. Uh, yeah, yeah, Queensland. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, can you tell us what was it like growing up in uh, Queensland? Uh, well, when I was young, it was idyllic, really, because um, uh, we lived on a river and the, the beautiful Brisbane River, and I spent a great deal of time. Uh, on the rocks on the river up and down I, I, I was very free to do whatever I wanted and I also had a dinghy and uh, I used to take the dinghy out all the time in, in, in the river so um, I'm, I'm, I'm very um, uh, boating friendly although yeah. I, never, I never get to boat now because uh, you know boating is really belongs to the very wealthy um, <laughs> I mean <laughs> but uh, but uh, I did have a dinghy and I spent a lot of time on the rocks and uh, I remember it all very fondly. Uh, I suppose um, uh, w w when I got older and became politically active, Queensland was a, a, a ruled by a very authoritarian government and a very, very conservative government. And um, the demonstrations started with um, demonstrating against the Vietnam War and then for uh, rights for Indigenous people because of the situations that they were set set, set up in, uh, in in all throughout Australia and the incredible racism that existed, absolutely extraordinary oh. racism, and um, uh, civil rights, the right to choose, um, gay, homosexuality was banned. I mean, it really was um, the most primitive um, state. Oh. And very, very just so conservative so eventually the, the right to march was banned uh, and i think that's why brisbane had such a very um dynamic punk movement uh because uh the the, the counterculture was huge to uh try to express itself against a, 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 an authoritarian police state oh i i, I didn't know that because you know you think of australia it's all like I don't know because I've never been there, but I always have this impression that it's all like you know people are just beautiful and they go surfing all the time and it's all like that. It's well, such a, a fun well, this, this place was, to this visit. Was, this was during the seventies. You know, it was a, a a real fight for Indigenous people to have to be recognised. Uh, you know, in, in Queensland in particular, they were incarcerated on on you know. Can, community areas and they had to ask permission to marry they had to ask permission to leave they, 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 they weren't didn't look after their own money and, and these were the sorts of early battles for black rights that occurred in Queensland uh, so that it was the 70s you know yeah. Yeah, Brisbane really was a small country town when I was growing up there and um, I mean it, it, it's it's changed considerably yeah, uh, for me, I have those those sort of memories. But what about music, though? What was it like? Uh, were there lots of uh, 
uh, clubs or uh, venues that you could go to? Uh, so you know, we're, talking, we're talking from about 1976 to 1980, aren't we? That's, yeah, so, um, yeah. well, um, we, we did a lot of that. We put a lot of our own gigs on in halls. Uh, there's a famous hall in Brisbane called Baruna Hall. And, uh, you know, we would we would have um, Super 8 films in the background and we'd have, uh, like, or, or there were lots of graphic artists doing posters and postcards. And then there were the bands, but uh, almost every gig. And then we opened up um, our gigs in Fortitude Valley uh, by playing uh, clubs that had never really had, um, they'd been strip clubs or, um, you know, uh, kind of may, maybe gambling clubs, that, those sort of things. We started opening up those because people wouldn't go down to the valley, but uh, we, 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 we figured we, we had to get gigs somewhere. Um, but the police managed to close most, you know, if we did a gig at Maroona Hall or in West End, the gigs would be closed down by the, the cops. Uh, they were always waiting outside at the end uh, because uh, the right to march was banned and um, they saw punk, which it was, as, as a movement to stand up, stand up against an authoritarian government. And, uh, and so, um, uh, yeah, it, 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 so they were really wild punk bands, like, yeah, yeah, yeah really thrash, thrashing bands, you know, yeah. uh, singing, it's, it's songs, very... singing songs like Peak City and, uh, you know, uh, yeah. See, remember yeah. the Saint, the Saints came from Brisbane. Uh, you know, they 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 were nineteen seventy six, seventy seven. They yeah. came from Brisbane, and although they weren't really a punk band, they were more a rock band um, with just extraordinary songs. Yeah, you know, they, they they wrote a song called Brisbane Security City, and of course, Stranded. It, that's about that. But they left early. They left by um, seventy seven, seventy eight. And, yeah, and the, yeah. Punk, the, the young punk bands came, started, and I was in a, a punk band called Zero, which was predominantly women, and um, uh, you know, so we were all. I was part of that whole movement. Yeah, well, I remember uh, Marty Wilson Piper when I saw him in Glasgow recently. He mentioned the Saints, and he said that um, because he was in the church as well, he said that we should find out about the saints because it's like a very important band <laughs> yeah so um so zero was that your first um band that was my first electric band i was in a, an acoustic women's band called shrew um before that uh playing mostly in lounge rooms uh but um <laughs> Uh, and it, 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 we were doing covers of 40, kind of forty jazz songs, and it was all it was it was very badly played traditional jazz, um, pre pre bebop. <laughs> oh, okay. Have you but have you always played the drums, or were you playing any other instrument? I've never played other instruments, but I've learned um, my way around piano now, um, and I pick up a bass guitar and play parts yeah. of that um, because I, I spent years working in community music where um, I was directing shows. Uh, oh, so okay. I had to really get uh, to, to help with the songwriting and often to find the correct keys or the, the, the chord progressions. I chose the piano to do that. Uh, so I, I really learn my way around the piano mostly by ear oh know, yeah i mean well once you understand how um, a key works and how scales work you can yeah. do it by ear uh so yeah yeah well before we continue i just want to say that aiden the rock said it's great sound and picture aiden is actually my tech support so it's nice to know that you know it's everything's fine and also um hello to guy keegan guy keegan is the drummer of the railway children i'm really glad that it, you know he said hi to to us here but um so what what got you into drumming oh i was uh, after i left home i was living in a house with um a, 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 a very a very large share house with, with uh, in tawong in brisbane 
um, with a bunch of actors. Jeffrey Rush was one of those. And uh, Billy Brown, who is now um, deceased. And uh, there's a, a guy who ha works in a company here called Coco Loco, called Trevor Stewart. He, uh, he's uh, in a London com theatre company. Plus a, uh, some musicians, in particular a drummer called Lindsay Arnold, who now lives in Hobart in Tasmania, who was a, a, an old crazy jazz drummer even then, but he's even an older crazy jazz drummer now. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so there was a music room and I just started playing drums that way. And did you um, just teach yourself how to play it or did you go have uh, was, uh, drumming I, lessons? In Brisbane, there's a, there's a famous drumming fam teaching family called the Leblers. And I went to um, their school down in Mary Street in um, Brisbane. And first of all, I was taught by Harry Lebler, the father, and then later on by the son. Um, but I would probably say that most of the drumming I've learned has been, um, at that period, was from reading a lot of books and following books. But I have to say that the person who's probably had the most influence over me over the last years has been Tommy Ego. I D O E. Do you know his work? No. Okay, so to, Tommy Tommy Ego does. If you look him up online, so it's just looking at him online. Um, uh, if you see him online, he he has this thing called Great Hands for a Lifetime, and he takes you through all the rudiments, and he has a rudiment chart. And the rudiment chart, the great thing about the rudiment chart is it shows you what the counting is and I always had trouble with rudiments because I never quite understood how the counting worked what was five four what was uh, you know which rudiment did you count you know uh, 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 in three four or five four or four four and every it goes through all the rudiments and you can play with him uh, oh. online. you can buy I bought his I bought his I bought his course and it really is like it's just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah. yeah, but I also learned when I was living in London in the eighties. So the go betweens lived in London in the eighties. I learned from a guy called Gary Chester. Uh, he's in New York, and um, he used to play for Dionne Warwick. He played on all her stuff, and he was the most remarkable, remarkable man. Um, and um, but I was in London, and he was in. Um, New York and I had to send him cassettes and the the real reason for me to play to him play, to learn with him he has a way of teaching but he wasn't really teaching me that bit I went to him because I couldn't play to a click track and, okay, yeah, and, yeah. and, and so in the mid in, of course I was totally untutored in that and in the mid um, 80s the producers were beginning to insist that we play the click tracks. And um, in, in the first recordings, I, I, I was unable to, well, I could, but it was, you know, I'll tell you what happened in one, in one studio. Um, we were recording a single right here. And um, the producer was Craig Leon. And he um, had me play to a click track. And then he called everybody to, uh, and he called everybody into the room, the band, and he had like six channels of me playing to a click track to the, to the guys playing the, the part, their parts with an acoustic guitar. Yeah, and then okay. he had six tracks of a drum machine, and then he played oh. the song through, and he lifted the six tracks of me, then he lifted the six tracks of the drum machine, then he lifted the six tracks of me, then he lifted the six tracks of the drum machine and he turned to the men and he said, which way do you want to make a hit record? <laughs> <laughs> so I lost that battle and uh, I was determined um, not to have that happen again, although it did happen again on other occasions. Um, but. Um, Generally, when a producer was deciding on a single, 
they'd want to use a machine. Um, and, and you'd play the you'd play the top parts, the cymbals. Um, but I was determined that you know once I was free of uh, the go-betweens that I was just going to get totally on top of the click, and and I have done. And I play play with the click live on many occasions. I actually like it, um, but not always. But uh, in, in, in certain situations, um, I really like to do it, particularly if you have a singer who's worked on their own for a while and they just move all over the place. And um, also, also, I really like it with a slow song. It really, it really keeps you in time with a slow song. But I've had situations where I've used the click track and on live. At, yeah, yeah. And in a rehearsal, so you, you and the, in this particular day, it, I had at least four guitars. Well, there were four guitars, and we were playing a song, and I could hear. You know, they were speeding up. I was trying so hard to pull them back, and and I just stopped. And someone turned around and said to me, "Lindy, you're speeding up." <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, God. Yeah, right. that's, that's very interesting oh, that I mean, I mean right here that's like uh in the philippines that's actually your most famous um the go-between song because um i did um so like a survey with uh one of the uh, new wave groups in in um <clears throat> And based in in Manila in the Philippines, and um, I just wanted to say thank you to Alex Laredo and the members of New Wave Solid because when they did the survey, right here was the number one, um, the Go Between song, and then the second one is Streets of Your Town as well, uh, oh. Streets of Your Town, and then the third is Head Full of Steam. So oh, the, wow. yeah, yeah, that's but that's the. But the others are actually, I mean, the others said that Bachelor Kisses, Love Goes On, I Just Get Cut Out, uh, Bye Bye Pride. And uh, and there's one that actually, so like not, he mentioned not a single, but an album track um, of um, Tallulah, Hope Then Strife. Apparently that's his oh, favorite yeah. <laughs> like the go-between yes. uh, yeah. song. But um, yeah, so um, Tracy Thorne, I think she said something that uh, when you're hitting the drums, it, it's not very ladylike. <laughs> so, so um, and then she said something like, uh, you know, you're in charge, not the singer nor the guitarist, uh, but you've also got, when you play the drum, you've got your, your legs wide open. And it's like, but isn't that sort of like the way the drummers do it? That all drummers have their sort of like legs wide open so they can... I think, she, I think her point was the fact that I would always wear a dress. Um, oh! <laughs> yeah, so I, I deliberately chose to always wear, wear a dress because of that very contradiction. And, um, uh, and I, still, I still do wear dresses, actually, I, um, or skirts. Uh, yeah. You, know, you, have, you have to choose them carefully. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've got a great skirt to wear to the show on, uh, <laughs> on Tuesday. <laughs> on Tuesday night, it's uh, it's it's. Uh, I, I bought it in the second hand store, but it's really beautiful. It's a it's a pleated black skirt, and uh, it, it's going to look fabulous. Not that anyone really sees it, but um, uh, uh, I, I I do like to wear a, a dress um, when you're playing. To, yeah, to, 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 yeah. So I think she was referring to that, that it wasn't ladylike to have your legs stretched apart when you're wearing a dress because traditionally women, as you know, will cross their legs and, um, uh, you know, yeah, and, look, yeah. And, look, and look more demure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to sort of like seeing you play the drums in a dress or in a skirt. So um, we, you mentioned zero um, before, because zero when you were sort of like in that band, it, it was spelled with a Z. But then when you left, uh, they changed it to an X, so it became zero. But is that where, is that where you met um, Robert Forster when you were in zero? Um, I was in Zero when I met Robert Forster, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, yes, yes, I was in Zero. Um, the the guy between were playing around 
and um, they had uh, they've had a couple of drummers, different drummers, so, well, maybe three or four actually, um, but never for, they never stayed for very long. Yeah. And um, uh, I went would go and see them. I really did love the naivety of their music, and uh, I because I was such a naive player as well um, and such a simple player. So our, the way our musical experience was identical and uh, it made it, uh, it made it, uh, you know, it, I, I understood what they were doing. Yeah. So well, I was going to see them and then I eventually met them. Yeah. 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 And, um, and then we, we rehearsed in this really, huge huge old warehouse um called the patterson building in in the valley and um i was inviting robert to come and jam with me and we used to jam together a lot and um i, I think we became friends through that jamming together oh we, yeah. would, we would often play for hours uh he would just be playing chords over and i'd just be going over uh, over backbeats just playing simple backbeats and putting in fills actually it's a good way to build up speed really i mean it's hard to be a fast drummer unless you're playing fast music all the time yeah, yeah you really yeah. become a fast drummer by being on the road a lot oh uh, well apparently you were the the go-betweens eighth drummer all right <laughs> Where did you get where did you get that little gym from? <laughs> from? It's from Tracy Thorne's book. <laughs> you were the eighth drummer, but you were the but really you were the first one because uh you were the one that stayed with them the longest. I was just sort of like wondering, what was it about the two of them, like with Grant McLennan and Robert Forster, that they couldn't find or they couldn't have a drummer that would stay with that until they had you until they met you. Was it, well, was it difficult to work with them as well? <laughs> when I think about so, I, I can think of four at least. One was a, a, a big a, a rock drummer who played in rock band, so he would have never stayed. That was oh. Bruce Anton. <laughs> um, one was a, a young, a young woman who she didn't like them much another was a writer called jared lee and he was just messing around <laughs> and another was the longest tim mustafa um and he played in clubs sort of cabaret he, he wouldn't have liked to be playing not making money i guess <laughs> oh right yeah yeah so, so, so you were um, the one yeah but I, my um a, a lot of, I mean, I loved their music and I loved their songs. But one of the things I really liked about them, frankly, was I liked, liked their ambition. They were going to get out of Brisbane. That was the whole point for them. They were very ambitious. They wanted a label. They wanted to get out of Brisbane. And so did I. And so oh. it was, a, it, was a, it was, it was, it was not only a love of their music, that, that probably wouldn't have been enough to motivate me to join. It was the love of the fact that they were moving on. And I, I, I'd already been to London in 1975, uh, 76 and 77, or 75 and 76. And I'm, I'd gone back to Brisbane, which was, you know, a strange thing to have done, I think, but I went back there uh, and it was a good thing to have done in the end because, um, that's how I got into music, and I mean, seriously into music. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was in theatre for a couple of years before that, you know, in in like seventy seven, seventy eight. But um, uh, yeah, so I I knew there was a bigger world out there, and I wanted to go into that world. But I I did not want to stay in Brisbane. Oh, so it's almost like you know, us Filipinos, we always wanted to sort of like go somewhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> we didn't want to just stay in the Philippines. We wanted to, you know, like you said, yeah, yeah. there's a bit of all about true. that. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, I could yeah, Thanks I could relate to that one. But um yeah, yeah so yeah. it's it's really the go betweens like the three of you, um, yourself, Grant McLean and, and Robert Forster. And there's also um in Tracy Thorne's uh, book, um, you look like um two wimps and the witch. <laughs> it was like and I thought that's a very <laughs> so, like was that really what uh they called you at the time or they just well, saw it, it, it's it's what someone called us at the time and um it, it, in fact it, it, there were lots of people the, the, the person who called us that was the then wife of keith glass and keith glass ran missing uh, missing missing records was record it? labels yeah the record yeah, the label, label. Yeah. yeah, and um, that was our first album. Send me a lullaby was on that, and our, and our first singles. Your your turn, my turn. Yeah. And, um, his wife, you know, didn't get us at all. Like we 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 moved to Melbourne first, just for a short time, and um, you know the the birthday party were the big thing there. You know that they, they were they were huge. Okay, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we were, <laughs> we, I guess we were really awkward and, uh, <laughs> and, um, and we were, I don't think we were particularly, I think we were, we were gauche, you, you know, that word gauche, kind of clumsy and, and, oh. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, it, it's a, it, it actually means left-handed gauche it's French oh, right. but it means okay. kind of yeah it means kind of awkward clumsy uh not fitting in we were like that and um I remember uh the birthday party girlfriends uh getting me in a um dressing room and telling me how to wear makeup <laughs> giving me a lesson on how to put on makeup <laughs> oh my god <laughs> well, you know, the they were, yeah because they, they all all had really they were really white you know faces they did that really white white makeup you know and yeah. they were telling me how you had to have extreme coverage oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, man. <laughs> well, you also did, um, so like, um, I don't know if it's a, but it's a short lived band with the birthday party as well, didn't you? Because oh, it was a band overnight, for God's sake, people. Oh, is it just, a, but you <laughs> released a record though? Some kind of like magical story. It says like, <laughs> we were all hanging out in the studio, I think it was Richmond Recorders. We're all hanging out, and, and we yeah. had. We, we were doing the night session and they were doing the day session and we crossed over and and I think everybody was speeding off their heads if I recall speed speed the drug of choice at that time and uh, we we, rec we recorded that song <laughs> it's actually it dreadful. It. it's actually it's dreadful <laughs> <laughs> Well, when when um in the band is it is it true that Grant McLennan was um well shall we say I don't know what the correct word is a bit indifferent or not really so like uh, didn't like you as much so so like is that because of your relationship with Robert Foster at the time? Oh right, oh you're asking me about Grant. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Gee, that's brave. <laughs> no, I don't think he, I don't think he liked me very much, you know. But uh, and and sure, definitely because I, I I you know I took Robert from him. I mean, I was Robert's first girlfriend. But um, yeah. Uh, look, I think uh, I mean, <clears throat> I, th I yeah, he he didn't like me. So I, I, there's not much you can do about a situation <laughs> like that. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, well, the one thing I'm going to ask you really is because you um, recently received a Grant McLennan Lifetime Achievement Award as well. So I was sort of like thinking, what was that like, you know, to have well, that? In fact, it's not the, it's not the Grant, Grant McLennan Lifetime Achievement Award. 
Is that on Wikipedia? Yeah, that's all. That's why no, it no, says no. on Wikipedia that it's like a Grant McLennan Lifetime no, Achievement. No, no, no. It was just the Queensland Music Lifetime Achievement Award. Someone, oh. I, I, someone's already taken that down. That was supposed to. Uh, maybe someone's put it back up. Wikipedia is a, Wikipedia is a, a festering sore with the information <laughs> that goes in and the information that comes out. Honestly, I can and I'm not allowed to touch my own Wikipedia. So I think, <laughs> if, if something. Something goes in, like you know. Oh. Anyway, um, uh, you no, know, it was the Queensland Music Lifetime Achievement Award. It wasn't the Grant McLennan Lifetime Achievement. Award. Oh right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was yeah, no, there was no conflict. And oh, okay. Because even, uh, even if I had got the Grant McLennan Lifetime Achievement Award, I would have thought that was ironic. I would, <laughs> have, I would have thought that was even a even a better joke. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, because I think um, there's so many Wikipedians that they can just change whatever, so like put things in there and then, or maybe remove things. So and sometimes I've, I've noticed that they will um, put a link to someone who is entirely different from the person that I was searching for. So yeah, I mean it's good Wikipedia, but you know, don't always believe in everything that they put on. <laughs> Well, I, I, I've had a lot of trouble with Wikipedia uh, because, um, you know, it was just such a mess and I'm, I'm trying to get it together. I can't do it. As soon as I do that, one of those pesky 12-year-old volunteers comes in and stops me doing stuff and then changes anything I do. But um, I, I, I've got someone helping me, uh, but they're mm -hmm. very, very slow. Uh, and he's had success in getting some stuff up. Uh, but there's a lot more stuff I'd like to go up, actually, because it, 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 it's very useful that, that people yeah. are aware of some of the things you've done. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's where I actually, so, like, I read Wikipedia so I can do some, some like, things I can ask you about. But anyway, so um, with the go-betweens, you became, like, a five piece uh, with Amanda Brown and uh, Robert Vickers. And watching your videos um again especially right here you all seem to have sort of like a great time all your videos seem to be like fun and um is, is it because it's sort of like they're like two lovers in the band plus robert vickers <laughs> so. um, i think um we loved to perform all of us we were all performers and yeah. i particularly loved uh, making videos, I, uh, you know, because it gave me a chance to do performance. Uh, not that I ever had a, um, a, a major role. That right here video was my idea because I like the idea of, you know, uh, doing all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, but we did have fun. We had lots of fun. I mean, but, you know, don't let the story of Grant and I disliking each other and there being a tension between us uh, override the fact that we, we were always having incredible fun. It, you know, it, it was the, the most awful times we were in the studio, really, but most bands will tell you stories from the 80s where it was very arduous working in studios. Um, yeah. it, you, were, you know, you were dealing with producers who... Uh, were, were fairly rigid but um, you know traveling around Europe and America and coming back to Australia and 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 touring and uh, it was just really great fun a lot of the time well you can tell it from the videos that you made. <laughs> just really love watching those things um I want to say hello to Alan Ramirez uh, Alan's in Manila and he's like wow the go-betweens <laughs> so thanks for joining us Alan um, so um you made six albums uh when you were in the go-betweens and I've always also just noticed this myself and again thanks to Wikipedia that all the titles of the albums has got double L's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that deliberate though? Yeah, it was deliberate, yeah. Uh, so the first two albums, it wasn't deliberate, Send Me a Lullaby and Before Hollywood. And then we noticed the trend. Uh, so we continued doing it. Yeah, it was good. It was a good thing to do. 
Yeah, yeah, because even it has, no, it, it has no spiritual significance whatsoever. <laughs> it, it means nothing. <laughs> but uh, but it, with 16 Lovers Lane, we, we kind of changed the idea a bit because the two L's went together. But uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, I can tell because our work at King View Records, uh, I, I work this out like part time every Saturday, and every time we get a uh, the go betweens record they're always very expensive and they go really quickly as oh, well. Really? <laughs> what, what's the name of the, the record store you work in uh, king b records in manchester oh okay yeah yeah so um i know that they're really so like um i think I'm, i know that most filipino record collectors you know they're so like well sought after records or what any the go between so i've only actually got one which is uh, the single uh, streets of your town because that's the only one i could afford but the, all the other ones that i've seen are sort of like oh, i'll wait until i find a sort of like a cheaper copy of it but um yeah so um like i mentioned the filipinos love uh, the go betweens but um i don't think robert forster was aware of it because when i saw him for the first time in manchester when he did this book uh grant and i I told him that I'm originally from the Philippines and that, you know, the Filipinos love the COVID queens. And he was genuinely shocked. He was like really surprised that he didn't know that their music, that your music actually reached us. And I said to him, yeah, yeah, you know, we do love you. So when I had asked him for a photograph, he actually said, hello, Manila. <laughs> I was I thinking there was a people or something. <laughs> it was just a photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you are you are actually aware of it because after the Gobi Queens, you're in a band called Cleopatra Wong. Mm. And um a friend of mine said that you went to the Philippines and did a promo. Yeah, uh, I, and I'm pretty sure we did a show. Maybe we only did a promo, but we we went from goodness me, we did Singapore, Hong Kong, um, Taipei. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Manila. Manila, yeah, yeah. And I and Seoul. Oh, so right. uh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, we we were with mourners in Asia. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I left a nine-month-old baby in Australia, and um, it, I, and uh, Amanda was seven months pregnant uh, at the time. So it, it it was all too weird. Uh, in fact, it, it, that too probably broke up with that thing long because we had the realization then that as two women with young babies we, it was impossible to do it you couldn't tour you just couldn't tour yeah, it, yeah. It, it was too painful it was just too painful so uh, anyway um i remember manila really well i i remember it very very clearly uh going to you're right we might have only done i remember being taken to dinner and it was the food was just fantastic. Oh my god! But I also remember. I'm going to tell the story. I remember <laughs> money being paid to the the guy presenting the the radio show that day. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I didn't know about this. He told me about it because it was in the early '90s, and I already left the yeah, Philippines. It was, it was, was '92. Yeah, 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 and uh, <clears throat> uh, we had to drive a long, long way to get to the radio station. Uh, it, it, it was a long way from the city. I mean, and yeah, I, I saw. Yeah, I, I really did like Manila. I have to say, and, That's uh, and, and but you're right. We, we 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 did such odd shows, and we did we did a TV as well. But we did such odd shows because it was just her and I. So there'd just be a drum kit, and, yeah. Um, her playing acoustic guitar, uh, acoustic electric guitar. You know, we must, it must have been so odd. Uh, now I think about it, yeah. But it was a it was a great little band, and it was, yeah. it, was it was Amanda's starting band for her as a songwriter. You know. Well, I tried searching YouTube for any clips of so like Cleopatra Wong being in Manila, so, but I couldn't find no, any. So I, don't... No, there's, I think there's only two clips of ours up. One is the, 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 the song, Thank You, 
and the other is another song that I just had to edit recently, or Amanda edited it actually. We had to edit it because uh, it's the other single. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's I've got a YouTube channel, Lindy Morrison H. There's not a lot up there because I only just started it. Um, but um, um, the we had to edit it because my daughter is in it. My 10 month old daughter and she's nude and these days oh. these days you could not have a video yeah. of a nude child um and so we've edited it out so it's only half in that that video um you'll see that it's an edited video and it's you've got uh, you've got the youtube channel so it's on your yeah, youtube it's called lindy morrison 8 and it's uh it's not got a lot up yet um yeah. but I'm, I'm putting stuff up as i go anyway i've been digitizing stuff from the past and um i found a live video a, a video of, of cleopatra wong live and i digitized it and showed it to amanda but amanda doesn't like it and doesn't want it up so oh. i'm hoping with time that uh you know she might change the chills yeah the she chills hates. actually the quality is terrible but I, I, I don't give a shit about the quality when I'm putting this stuff up because it's all about history. It's, that's true, yeah. 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 And, yeah. you know, if you don't digitise stuff and put it up, when, when you're done, you know, my daughter's just going to clean everything out and you, she's going to throw away the computer. You know, the videos are just going to go. Uh, you know, I put up some interviews that luckily I had video of that I did in the early, you know, 90s. There's some interviews there and stuff like that, and there's still probably some more that I can find at home. Yeah. Also, I, I've also put up um, just audio, uh, uh, for instance, a zero gig, you know, because uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's been fun actually. Yeah, uh, it's always good to sort of like have those um, on YouTube because at least people can search for it, and then especially the ones who missed out, they weren't you know weren't there at the time, or so like you're too young to go to gigs and things like that. So at least we can see it, we can watch it on YouTube. So I think yeah, that's a good so, thing. Um, I really have to, Amanda's really, I saw, she did an interview recently, she said in that interview that she can't stand a voice on the Cleopatra Wong records because she's just put out her own album. Yeah, yeah. Recently, yeah. Yeah, um, I've heard about that, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's lovely, it's a lovely album. Um, and... Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know how I'm going to go on that. Maybe with time she might change her mind. Hopefully, said, yeah. Again, the quality is not great. <laughs> yeah. Well, Alan just said that, yeah, we love the go-betweens very, very much. So, yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's true. Nice. Well, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, talk about the book. Um, um, Tracy Thorne's uh, book called My Rock and Roll Friend. Um, I want to just say, uh, give a shout out to a friend of mine, Jane Hand, who's married to Adam Holford, who's a drummer as well. And uh, the daughter, uh, Sydney, is also a drummer. Um, so she knows what, you know, she knows that I like this thing. So she mentioned it to me. And that's when I searched for you. I looked for you on Facebook. And I'm really glad that you said yes to us. But anyways, when I was reading, the first um, thing that I've noticed was she mentioned that um, interview you did and you were talking about like um, being a feminist and you know with Robert Foster and, and stuff and it, it was coincidentally so like I actually watched it um, a few days earlier before I got the book before I started <laughs> reading the book and do you still so like um, get interviewed for things like that because I know it was more so sort of like the seventies, the eighties, but sort of like the feminist uh, movement uh, things. Because I remember that when I was young, you know. So like, um, but do you still uh, talk about it a lot these uh, days? Are you, are you asking me? Do I still talk about women in rock? Um, and I think it was that video, particular uh, that particular interview uh, about uh, talk about. Sex, sexism or feminism, sexism in, in the Australian music industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I was giving lots of examples. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. I love that interview. I think that's that's one of the ones I put up. I, I love that. <laughs> but, um, 
I don't like to talk about women in music at all anymore. And in fact, um, you know, when um, <clears throat> when I uh, received that Queensland Lifetime of Music Award, someone uh, said to me, you know, you've got to talk about how hard it was to be a woman in music and from the stage, you know, because I did a speech. And uh, I, I said, no, I'm not doing that. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. There are young women now. They're everywhere, and they can talk about it. I want. I want to hear what they have to say. I, I've. I've. I've had. I've had my adventure, and I, now I'm yeah. old, you know. And I don't. Just don't want to be the spokesperson anymore for women in music. I just refuse to do it. And I also refuse to be the spokesperson for um, ageism in music. I don't want to do that either. I've been asked to do that, you know. It's just. Yeah. I, I, being being that that. Uh, woman that I had to be for so many years where I always had to talk about sexism in the industry. Frankly, in the end, it just drove me crazy. And I, I got sick of being typecast as that person. So I won't talk about it. But do you think a lot has changed? Uh, oh, from... Everything's changed. Everything's changed. For God's sake, in my day, you never saw anyone on, no women instrumentalists on the stage. There were no women on stage. You know, like... <laughs> Today, if there isn't a woman in a band, you're surprised. Yeah, but a boy, has it gone boy back? Band, boy bands, boy bands, and they're a genre of their own. That's a boy band. They're all boys, you know. Like <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but has it gone? Do you think it's gone better now that uh, maybe uh, the women in the music industry are so like being treated better now than in the past? Well, yes, of course, because. Um, there are so many more of them, so that their 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 culture is permeated. You know, their their culture is permeating. I mean, the the Me Too movement did a lot to change the fact that men couldn't be sexist. You know, there might might have been extremes of the Me Too movement that weren't so hot, but you know, the Me Too movement had its 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 qualities for sure. Oh, I think a mm. lot's changed. I, I don't yeah. think men can get away with what they used to get away with anymore. Like and and also, uh, you know, women have access to the stages. They they, they just weren't. They weren't. Yeah, around. yeah. Because I remember when the first uh, when I interviewed my first ever female drummer, <laughs> female drummer guest, uh, Layla from Lines. She's absolutely amazing. I remember sort of like talking to my daughter about it because I said, "Do I have to mention female drummer?" Because I think for me, I mean, there's no difference really it's all like the, you're all drummers you're all amazing drummers so i tried not to mention so like female and uh, male uh, yeah. drummers but this, yeah. yeah but i mean there is so like a, a difference it's a, i mean of course there will always be difference and i remember um the drummer of uh, the meekens john langford he actually said that he's hero so the drummers that he likes the best are female drummers so, <laughs> so, so i was all like thinking now maybe maybe i should sort of like address that, that there is a difference or, but, but, but do you think there is a difference that maybe so sort of like uh you were like i think the first time i asked about um if you get treated differently from male drummers was when i had i think i when i had sid on the show so um yeah so maybe when you see a, a male drummer then they say yeah that's fine but when it's a female drummer it was sort of like uh oh you know she's she's not as powerful as the others but it's i i just love being i just love watching yeah, I, I i think uh i mean i saw fliss kitson the other night oh yeah the yeah guys. talk about power i mean yeah. she, She's the most extraordinary drummer. Like she's unbelievably powerful. She is, uh, yeah, yeah. So strong. Uh, I, I I couldn't couldn't get over her her, her strength. And yeah. um, uh, there's a drummer in um, Australia. I mean, there's lots of female drummers in Australia. I I, I like, but Brie Van Rijk, for instance, she's a she's a very um, great, very strong drummer. Claire Moore. <coughs> From um, Dave Graney, you know, her, Dave Graney and Claire Moore, 
you know, she's very, very strong. I, I, I do, I know what you mean, though, about, uh, um, in particular, some may have a light touch. Now, I saw Holiday Ghost last night and saw Katja, uh, the, the drummer Katja, and um, she, uh, she's, she, she may have, have a light t touch, but she's got a light touch because every song is so bloody fast. So she's just using her fingers to, get to, 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 to do the speed. It was so fast, the, the, the material, uh, but she's very neat and I would say, you know, quiet player. And yeah. In a way, maybe what you, what, 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 you know, what, what you're thinking about when you're saying a quieter play. Yeah. They tend to be, uh, some, some of the, um, also maybe they're in, more in experience when, when you first start seeing them, you know, maybe because they're young, you know, they are, they, you're not going to find old female drummers on the stages now. I mean, there are some, there's like me and there's, you know, Sheila E and, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, yeah, other, and it, so it, it's not like you're seeing uh, after years and years and years of playing how they've developed. You're seeing them when they're young, really. Not Fliss, mm -hmm. though. I mean, look at Fliss. She's just a powerhouse. She's so oh, I love, yeah. I love Fliss. <laughs> I love Fliss because I'm actually, because I think she's going to be there on Tuesday as well. So I'm really looking forward oh, to seeing so. her. I don't know. But um, <laughs> uh, well, I like the way she uses her right hand. She never plays, well, with the Nightingale, she never plays a backbeat. She's moving her right hand around the kit all the time and very, very fast because she's playing the eighth notes. As she's moving her right hand around the kit, yeah. yeah so it's a re really interesting style. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I know it's nearly so like eleven o'clock now, but uh, can I just ask you about your other bands as well? So after Cleopatra, um, on your Discogs, there's a Discogs entry as well. Uh, you got a band called The Rainy Season. Yeah, I was in the Rainy Season with some with Amanda. Actually, Amanda was in that. That was for about. I don't know, four years or so. Clyde Bramley, who's a, 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 been in the in lots of bands. Yeah, that that was interesting. But it, it's I'm more interested in, in talking about the the bands I'm in now. So, and, and the bands of recent. So I played with a young woman called Alexi Astronaut for a couple of years, and um, uh, but she's got a young band now again with a real powerhouse drummer from Queensland. Yeah. Um, I, I think her name's Kayla. I've forgotten her name. Uh, precisely, so she, but I worked with her. I was her first drummer. She and she'd been a solo artist, so um, uh, you know I, I I played with her, and it was always she always was going to get a younger younger female band, and then now I've been playing with um, what's called the uh, Snarsky Circus Lindy Band, and yeah. um, that's Rob Snarsky who was in a group called the Black Eyed Susans, and he. Um, he, he's put out a lot of work, a uh, solo work, and um, we just have made a mini album that's about to come out. But I've been playing with him for at least 18 months, and we tour a lot. We play tons, so we're playing yeah. all, all around Australia. And Are um, you bringing it over to the UK someday? Or? Well, I'm hoping to. Hopefully. Like, it, it's, it's expensive. Yeah. Oh. I, 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 yeah. I, I understand... Um, there's going to be some kind of Triffids, um, Triffids show next year around March, and he's part of that. And I could build something around that, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, and um, so, and then I'm playing with a trans woman called Cassie Judy, and I call that kind of um, cabaret, uh, although she's not sure it's cabaret, but I'm pretty sure it's cabaret. It needs a it needs a lot of work because again, she's been working by herself, and still works a lot by herself. So she doesn't work with a band much. So yeah. you do find that um, uh, you know you, you you're learning the arrangements from a record, but when you um, go to do it live, uh, she might bring the stabs in after the second chorus when you've learned that they come in on the third chorus, and so you miss. <laughs> the stabs which is really disappointing because you liked that bit and it was dynamic <laughs> <laughs> do, you still see, do, do you still see amanda brown a lot or are I you still in time. yeah we, we uh, yeah 
Yeah, we talk a lot. And we've, we're doing a gig together, a really high profile gig um, in the Sydney City Recital Hall. Now it's June, early June. Uh, oh no, it's June 30. And she's um, reproducing her album, which is eight guitars. And she's got the eight guitarists playing each of the songs. And I'm supporting her with Rob Snarsky because two of the people in our band, well, not be, because, but uh, luckily, two of the people in uh, Rob Snarsky's band play uh, on her record. So they're, right. they're being bought up by the venue. Uh, yeah. So I don't have to look after those fees. <laughs> and they're also being accommodated. So it's just fantastic. And we're and you're recording. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I've got to work out now is do I take my drums? Uh, because Amanda's got a drummer and or use his. But the more, you know, because it's a big deal, of course, uh, taking the drums. But the more <laughs> I think about it, the more I want, want to play my Ludwig drums uh, <laughs> on that stage, set them up yeah. and have them look fabulous. Um, but um, and I do love playing them, uh, you know. So I think I'll probably do that. But um, yeah, yeah. So yes, we we talk. There's always lots. Of, we swim together. Um, we both live in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, and we swim together. And we both talk, uh, you know, a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. There's always a lot to talk about. She she composes for film. She's incredibly busy. She's never out of work. Like. So it's a TV series and film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're also you. You've been busy. You never stop working, and you never stop sort of like playing the drums. Well, the, the, I'm not going to stop playing the drums. No, but my body's not going to last. You know, I'm I'm not going to be able to. Uh, you know, I, I I'm not going to be able to keep it up. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know. Maybe post seventy five. You you see you see a really. You see a lot of um, uh, people after 75, they really begin to deteriorate, I think. I, I, I'm noticing that. And so I'm seeing that, you know, there's going to come an end to this. And that's why I'm doing as much as I can now. Yeah. You know, I just don't have much time left. And, Do you uh, think there's a possibility of sort of like uh, the go-between reunion? Because no, Robert Foster is still playing. I mean, he's headlining... Glasgow spot in July. Is I there? Have, I've asked Robert. He is, he won't do it. There's no way he's going to do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. it's yeah. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> well, um, right. I, I'm going to ask you just the last question. So, like the last, so when you play the drums, do you twirl? Do you do this so like twirling like, thing? Do I do throw? You know when, do I well, twirl? No, yeah, I do you twirl or and then throw sticks I, up no, and do tricks? I, 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 do, I do love to throw, but I'm too nervous about my eyes. You know, I mean, I love to bounce the stick off, 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 off a drum and catch it. But uh, frankly, I, I'm too worried that I'll hurt my eyes. And um, uh, so I'm, I'm a very cautious person. And uh, also, um, I, I don't twirl, but I, I, I'm going to learn to twirl. In fact, that's what I'm going to do in the in the next um, in the next while. I'm going to learn to twirl. <laughs> I, I, you know, whenever I'm having, whenever I'm not doing anything, when, when I'm wasting when I'm wasting time, I'm going to twirl. <laughs> have so you ever had time, a... Next time you interview me, I'll bring a stick and I'll do a twirl. And you would. <laughs> I, mean, I, like you, I do like it when drummers do that. Yeah, I, I do too. It's like when I go see them and then they sort of like do the twirling, especially when there's sort of like a gap and yeah. then they do the twirling and then they go boom. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's just amazing. Yeah. But I have like you ever it. had any um, accidents in your years of um, drumming? I, I In Spain one year, uh, I, fell off, um, I fell over at, at a club after a gig and sprained my ankle and that was absolutely fucking horrible so i i just I, and look I'm, I'm terrible when i'm when i'm walking downstairs i walk down really really slowly wherever i am 
and um, I'm very conscious of my ankles and and falls and all that sort of stuff. And um, uh, as I said, I'm very very cautious. Uh, yeah. I, I I I don't want to sprain my ankle again. Uh, you know, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Touch wood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, do you have any drumming heroes? Oh yeah, I've got tons. Of, tons Love. Of, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, like. Um, Hal Blaine, I love Hal oh, Blaine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just, I, like, Tony Williams, Han Benning, um, yeah, um, while we go to bed from wire. Um, uh, oh, like, really, I could just go on. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've also, like, from the 80s, 90s drummers. Uh, Eight, 80s drama or not from the 80s or like music scene in the 90s like maybe at the time when the go-betweens was all like really famous was there any particular oh yeah well I, re I, I, I loved Jet Black he was oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 really just a superb drama um yeah I just can't think of the top of my head right now but yeah. <laughs> I'm always um you know, I, I, I do love to look up um, solos in particular. Um, you know, Buddy Rich, for instance. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the, the famous solo he, did, he did, did in West Side Story. And, you know, I like to um, see how those solos are broken. Actually, his solos aren't complicated. They're just singles and doubles. But the, it's the speed that he does them. They're just so fast. You know, they're really, really fast. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I like the the Sandy Nelson. Yeah, I I like to play all all around the toms. Uh, I when I go into a practice room to practice, I, I rarely do backbeats. I just do stuff around the toms. Um, I mean, un, unless I'm practicing. Well, obviously, when I'm practicing the, the Lloyd Bean stuff, I'm playing yeah. the album, so I'm just doing back. I'm just reproducing what the drummer did on the album. Yeah, um, yeah, but. Uh, if if I'm going into practice rooms by myself to practice, I don't touch the symbols really. I mean, my, my left foot's closing the high hat, but I'm just moving round and round. Oh, uh, right. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really like to do single and double combinations, and I like to work out um, solos around single and double combinations. Uh, and... Um, I don't like any of my solos, but I've developed not a single one, so I'm so I'm not I'm not getting there. But then you can just take a little bit and use them as fills, and the fills I really like to do it combinations of singles and doubles. Not that you can do them all the time. I can do them in the Rob Snarsky band because he's, 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 the music's so slow, so you can do a kind of long single double, you know, like paradiddles, mixtures of different types yeah. of paradiddles. That's what. That's in fact what you're doing. You're doing forms yeah. of parallel around the kit. But sometimes yeah. I, I get confused and end up on the wrong hand. You know, you end up on the right hand. But you know, you, you, you've done. You know, you you, ha, you you haven't counted it right. You've, you've only done half, half, half of the figure. Where you're supposed to come back with the left hand, but I've forgotten half the figure. Oh right. Forgotten, yeah. You know, yeah. And I'm back in the chorus. Or, yeah. or back in the verse and I'm on the wrong hand and I don't you know so yeah but I like to do it I like to experiment with that stuff and I like to experiment it with it live but it, it's it's tricky to do that in case you make a mistake and sometimes yeah. your timing can just it with slow songs your timing can be out and 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 that's ugly <laughs> 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 well, Aiden said that a uh, great conversation. Lindy is very inspiring. So, um, yeah, you you are very inspiring. But um, thank you. Can you just start, like, uh, do you want to just invite um, our viewers and anyone who's in London or in the UK uh, for next Tuesday's gig? I'm definitely going to be there. So, do you want to just okay, sort yeah. like? I think yeah. it's going to be a really fantastic gig. It's. Um, uh, uh, Rob Lloyd from the Nightingales and Janet Bean from Freakwater and, and uh, Mark uh, Bedford from Mandis is on bass and, um, yeah, yeah. and uh, 
Peter from the Membranes is uh, Peter Beach, Bishmore is playing um, guitar, and there's another guy called Spencer who's playing guitar. Spence Roberts, yeah, he's going to be there as well. Yeah, so, so um, it's going to be a really great gig, and it's yeah. at, at the Bush Hall. And Which, I hope to see you there, and I look forward to meeting you, Anne. I really do. Yeah, I really look forward to so well, like in the well, hall. I'll see you before the show. I'll probably watch the support act. Um, yeah, so and hopefully like, I can have a photograph with you before. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. And, well, and, and furthermore, do you keep you keep a record of this, don't you? Yes. Yeah, well, I always sort of like upload it, so like a well, few I'll hours be after. To, and... I'd, be able to, could I, I'd be able to put this up on my YouTube channel. Oh yes, that? yeah, yeah. Okay, I can send that's you that's the right. file as well if you want. But also before, because uh, there's. There's also this question that I forgot to ask you. How did that come about? What? The um um the <laughs> that this this talk this gig that on oh, Tuesday oh, with um, um from the Nightingales and well you, you know so, you know the do you know the stand up comedian called Stuart Lee? Stuart Lee, yeah, because he yeah, did right, the yeah. um documentary about yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he's a friend of mine so he and he knew oh. I was um and he. Uh, suggest, oh, and, and Rob went to him about a drummer, and he said, "Oh, Lindy's going to be in town." Oh, and, right. And, yeah, and so that's how I got the gig. We just had to at least stand up. Well, okay. Well, I'm really looking forward to meeting you finally. I can't believe it. It was like a legend, a Australian legend, the go betweens. And um, so, um, yeah, so um, because um, I have to sort of like make sure, I hope, hope the, the set finishes around 10 or just shortly after because I need to get back to Manchester on that one. So if I could get a photograph before the show or before you go on stage, so that will be, you yeah, that will be great. Okay, uh, it'll be before I go on stage. Yeah, so okay. it's like, because oh, sometimes, okay. yeah, so... Yeah, because sometimes it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna miss my bus back to Manchester. Oh, so it's like, because sometimes it goes longer. Things. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I feel for you. I don't know what time we're on stage. What time are we on stage? You know? I think it's sort of like nine, isn't it? All right, so you, 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 you'll only see, you'll only see probably half the gig. Yeah, because David, David Callahan is, David Callahan is going to be yeah, uh, supporting, supporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'll oh, be I'll uh, be in London from the afternoon anyway, so so like make sure get to the venue early and hopefully meet oh, well, you there. Maybe, maybe you should just come to the sound check. Oh, well, that would be great. Yeah, I'll, 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 let, I'll let you know what time we're sound checking. Oh, okay, all right. Thank that's you that's so much. Idea. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, let it go now. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Lindy, and uh, yeah, see you. see you on Tuesday. Bye. 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 Oh my God. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. That's such an amazing sort of like interview. I really love um, the way that she saw, sort of like, said yes to me. I couldn't, believe, I still couldn't believe it. And I was just still nervous. I don't know what I'm saying. But, anyways, thank you all so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, next week, I'm going to be in London. <laughs> on Sunday, but the show, Lindy, Lindy Morrison's um, um, gig, it's not until Tuesday, but I'm going to be in London on Sunday as well, because I'm going to be seeing uh, John Moss, uh, John Moss and his new band, Ridiculous, so um, yeah, I'm hoping to get John Moss on Astro Drummer as well, um, someday soon, um, yeah, so uh, I'll be back on the 7th of May, and um it's going to be another awesome guest for that Sunday. But as always, <laughs> so like as always, uh, love music, love life, love, love, love drummers. Thank you once again. I hope to see you on the 7th of May. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.